So what we're doing this time is replacing a freeze plug or a Welsh plug, depending on what you want to call it, on this block right here. And that one right there is weeping, so we got to remove it. Which means punch it in to pull it out. Okay. And what you're looking at right there was an awfully big surprise for me as it probably is for you guys. It turns out that that block, which I've been running for a number of years and never really noticed a big problem with, was full of what I assume was dirt. Like all the way in tons and tons of dirt. So I can only assume that that one particular plug was rusting the way it was because it was full of dirt and all sorts of funk behind it and how that got packed that tight with that much crap i have no idea i've had that tractor now uh, four or five six years something like that i've been brush hogging with it ring dragging with it moving around bales around with it and I would have never have guessed that that back cylinder was not getting any cooling at all from the uh, water jacket. Kind of stepping into this project, I made sure I could get the plug caps that I needed and started draining the radiator. And I thought the big complication I was going to run into was going to be, oh, can I get these caps back in right? You got to hammer them flat. It's a whole thing. I, I never saw this coming. And, uh just dug and dug and dug. Right there is where I ended up breaking through to the actual portion of the water jacket that wasn't consumed by packed dirt. So I cleared that out as best I could and I ended up using uh, a number of different tools to clear out as much debris as I could and kind of that's how it went. At some point coming up I'll end up switching to the last tool that I used, which was a piece of metal wire, and I fished it around the cylinders as best I could. That's all I ended up doing, just so I could replace a freeze plug cap. This was awfully helpful for getting around the bends of the cylinder walls and kind of scraping across the sides of the block to get little bits of debris out of there that I couldn't quite get with a screwdriver or a ring seal puller. And after I got as far as I could, and I think I got to the end of the dirt, that's where I sort of just had to accept the fact that I got what I could and cleaned it up. And once I got those cleaned out as best I could, I figured let's pull the rest and see what we find. So these plugs here are a little different than your average uh, freeze plug. They're uh, kind of a domed piece of steel that you hammer them in to get them to go in and then you hammer them further in to get them all the way out. So that's why I'm using a punch to drive them in the way I do. And since this one came up pretty clean, let's move on to the next one. So the first one here that I pulled out was paper thin, heavily rusted. Second one was pretty much solid, didn't have a lot of rust on it, but no debris behind it. This one here was kind of in between the two and also has a pretty reasonable pocket of debris buildup in there, but it was not fully jam packed with, uh, again, whatever I assume is probably dirt that was in there. So I hogged that one out for a little bit, but it was um, not as tightly compacted in there as the first one was. And if while watching this video you're looking at that oil filter and thinking, man, I wish I had me one of them, I'd say check out the video where I installed that. There's a link in it now that'll show you where I got it. 
maybe it's uh, something you want to consider. I'm liking it. I think for servicing and whatnot, it's pretty slick and beats having that paper filter in there that they have originally. So, or maybe you're admiring that nice new fan belt that's on there, or all those fresh spark plug wires. And if you're wanting to see how those went on, check it out on the YouTube page. There's a video for each of those. And once I feel like I got all the debris out of there that I could find, sticking metal wire in there as far as I could, it's time to prep the seat where the new seal is going to sit. And I apologize where the new Welsh plug is going to sit. They, they go in, they sit pretty tight, and then when you hammer them flat, they expand out. So that little lip they sit in seems pretty important that it's cleaned pretty well. So I went out of my way to make sure it was as nice in there as I could make it. Knowing that this machine was made from a lot of parts, the motors from one thing, trans is from another, I know the radiator and some of the other things are off of a 2N, so I can only assume this machine, that motor specifically, sat outdoors for a very long time, but never gave me any clues that there was a problem with the water jacket. Always ran real good. I've seen all sorts of reviews that'll talk about use sealant, use this, use some product one way or the other when you seat these in, but they didn't come with any kind of extra additive to hold them in, and they seemed to work really well if used the way they were intended, so I did not add any extra material when putting it in. I just made sure that the lip that they sit in was good and clean. That one there gave me a little bit of trouble, so I had to clean it up a little bit more, but that was it. You just punch them in the middle, try to flatten them out. For these last two, they didn't sit flush immediately, so I kind of adopted a little baby tap method to kind of get them to kind of sit in there without rocking around and then after that I drove them home. There you have it. Those are in, topped it off with fluid, and hoped as much as anybody could possibly hope that it wasn't going to leak, and it did not. So, that's it. If you've ever run into that problem before, it's 
how I fix that problem for my machine. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody and entertaining to watch. And you guys enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you next time.